Every person is born with the desire to move, to explore the wonders of our world, and to find adventure. For some of us, we discovered it through the legends of the past. Timeless and analog, they redefined the limits and showed us the way. Climbing mountains, they strapped wood to their feet and demonstrated the thrill of gravity. What goes up must come down. But this movie, this movie's not about the legends. This one is for the rest of us. Mountain Towns, the chosen home for people who share a love for sliding down a snow-covered mountain, but sadly, get only one season to quench their thirst. Sure, there's plenty of trails to explore and ball games to be played, but there's really only one thing on everyone's mind. Looking out my window, I can see the clouds above. The barometer is falling. Will it be enough? I waited all summer for winter, and now it's finally near. I don't think I can wait much longer for snow to fall right here. As I lay my head down, I can only hope and pray. That tomorrow will bring me a beautiful powder day. Powder, 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 please don't delay. Don't expect me at work if tomorrow's a powder day. I am an old man, and they say it's time I pass. Well, I must have my powder, and they can all kiss my ass. So whenever powder is falling, that's my time to play. Up at the mountain you'll find me on every powder day. Powder! If tomorrow's a powder day mm There's a cold front coming on. It's a bit nippy at the top of the peak, and Mission Ridge is open all week. You've been waiting since last year for a solid six inches, and this morning we got eight inches in all the right places. So listen up, Jarius. Grab your favorite honey snow bunny and come grind and swerve on some sweet natural curves. These double diamonds ain't gonna ride themselves, people. 
The lifts are wide open, and they ain't stopping till we all get off. You know the time, you know the place. Come get that sweet white power in your face. If the parking lot's full, just slip in the back. All over town, they hear the shout from the mountain. Calling my friends, get on up now. Then we're going down, down to the bottom. With all of my friends, we're going down. Get lifted and do it again. Up and down, the shivers ride my spine. Snow on the limbs upon the road supplies Falling from the heavens, crystals made of love Shining on the mountains like the stars above I make Mother Nature shake her money maker for a taste of what the good Lord gave us I make Mother Nature Shake them on the makers Feening for a taste of what the good Lord gave us Down, Chad. So good. Seriously, guys? <laughs> How do you explain skiing? I have no idea. Skiing is a uh, skiing is it's a it's a sport that's so unique. You take two pieces of a tree, bind them onto your feet, and then you try to get down without dying to the bottom of the mountain that you just came up. That's basically skiing. Skiing's an opportunity to slide down something that you normally just look at from a distance. I I love it. Fun. Lots lots of fun. Every run you can kind of choose your own adventure. You can go off jumps, you can do moguls. It's just if you feel so free. Riding powder. I wish I did it better. Well, the first rule is there's no friends on a powder day. Captain Powder, that's what my uh, season pass says. <laughs> what does it mean to ride powder? That's truth. Oh man, that's a that's an interesting. Jeez, you can't even explain it. I've tried to explain it to a number of people. What does it mean to ride powder? It just feels like you're floating above the ground. You're not really on Earth anymore. Lightness, dancing, flying slash falling, flying, flying, flying. You're flying. That's what it is. It's flying. It's like nature's pillows, and you can just float on top of it. Soft, fluffy snow that rolls up on your waist. Blowing up in your face. You can't see your skis, and you have to feel what you're doing. Big turns, big slashes. Throw up a spray. Shooting up tidal waves of powder all around you. They're magic waves. Magic waves of snow. Yeah. Like pure joy. <laughs> yeah! Woo-hoo! And then in the snap of a finger's bead, it 
total disaster with skis and boots and poles flying everywhere. Boy, what a, what a thrill that is. But then you say, I want to do it again. And I keep thinking if I go one more time or one more run, maybe I'll feel finished. But I'm never finished. We all have a hometown hill, the place we got our first taste. Every cold ride up, every quick run down, each turn transforms into pure joy, gravity into freedom. Some of us are born on skis. Conquering the rope toe is a rite of passage. Still others come later. It doesn't matter when or how. Once you're hooked, you're hooked. The birth of the American ski hill was salvaged from World War II as members of the mountain divisions returned home with surplus ski gear and a revolutionary idea. Winter can be fun. Skiing's popularity boomed, and from the 1940s through the 60s, ski hills were carved into mountains across the American West. One community in central Washington saw an opportunity to harness a mountain of their own. There was interest all over the area in skiing during the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Leavenworth, of course, was going great guns on uh, jumping, but that didn't satisfy us. We wanted downhill skiing. There were rope toes being established all over the area. You just hook a, a rope up to a little engine and you'd have a way to get uphill were so fast and they'd burn a hole in your jacket under your armpit because you were holding on so hard and if you were a little kid they actually lifted you off the snow and it was like flying all the way to the top and then you drop. I mean it was awesome. It was the best ever. A big ski school was operated by the KPQ radio station and uh, trained a lot of skiers during that period. That itself really opened up a whole new area for kids that uh, kind of spread throughout the valley. I mean, suddenly winter was something that you looked forward to and enjoyed and loved. There was recognition in the general area that, you know, we needed something bigger and closer than Stevens Pass. We had all this energy and people raring to go skiing, but they had to travel to do it. A group headed by Danny Geringer had ambitions of making the Upper Stemelt a ski area. But along came Wilmer Hampton, who was a civil engineer, started looking at the Squilchuck because it had, in his feeling, a lot more vertical available than anywhere else. He almost came to fisticuffs about which area would be the better way to go. The Chamber of Commerce decided to study the two competing projects. In the end, why all the snow surveys and everything showed that Mission Ridge, where it is now, would be the place to put the, the ski area. There was just a few of us that put up risk capital that we were never going to get back if it didn't happen, but we were pretty convinced it was going to happen. The county got interested, the Forest Service got interested because it took five miles of new road to make it feasible. So the two of them together invested more than a half million dollars. When they started selling stock, there was a big response from a wide, wide variety of people from all over the area. There was so much energy uh, toward this project that uh, you couldn't help but be excited about it. 
Everyone was just hovering off the ground. And uh, we were off and running. The Hampton family grew up in the Squilchuck, and Wilmer and his brother Walt were enthusiastic supporters of the whole project. But Wilmer was the man that had put the time in to study the area so well that he knew what it would take. He just really lived the area. It was his, his plan. He had his own ideas of how he wanted to do everything, but they were all good ideas. He was, he was leading the van when a year before Mission Ridge was to open, why he unfortunately died of heart attack. It was a terrific loss to lose him at the time we lost him. So his brother, Walt, sold his business and was Mission Ridge's head then for nearly 20 years. Walt was kind of single-minded. Uh, he knew the business. Walt wasn't understood by a lot of, and not appreciated by a lot of people. Walt was hard-nosed. Financially, he, he made sure that that company wasn't going to go broke. He didn't hire a bunch of things that he didn't need to. He didn't spend a lot of money on advertising and was criticized a lot for doing that. But I, I really think that because of that, it survived. He brought in Magnus Bakke to help design the runs. Magnus was real talented. Anything to do with the physical aspect of the mountain, Magnus was the guy. Magnus designed all the runs so that they were pretty protected in the trees and, and the snow wouldn't blow off of them. And he was very careful to leave it natural terrain where he could leave it. And that's what makes it fun and exciting for skiers. They were hurrying against winter to get everything done. The last pour on top was as late as the 27th of September. So the lodge was being built at the same time that the chairlifts were being put in place. There was so much excitement about finally getting their own ski area that everywhere we turned there were welcome faces saying, oh boy, this is going to be great. Our first year was a disaster. We had all this energy and anticipation and people raring to go skiing and uh, no snow. Well, that first spring, we had bid on the Ski Instructor Symposium, and that usually attracts about, oh, in the neighborhood of 200 instructors. So we wanted to have them come here so that they would take away some good vibes on what a great area it was. On the Thursday, it started to snow. Thursday night, we had about six inches of snow. Friday, we went up there and we had about a foot of snow, still snowing like crazy. Saturday, when all of the people showed up, there was about two feet of new snow. And they all thought this place was awesome. kind of saved our bacon that first year in that we wound up the season with a lot of people that spread the word that when we get snow, the skiing's going to be awesome.
I ski with people and get to visiting with them. And they go, how old are you? I tell them, oh, pick a number. What do you think? And they go, well, you're middle 60s. And I go, yeah, you're right. Hey, how we doing here? Oh, good. Right on, right on. Thank you. See you later, alligator. <laughs> I still love to get with my friends that I ski with all the time. You know, people that have passion, those people are fun to be around because they get excited about something. They look forward to something. Pretty sweet snow today. It's about as smooth as a baby's butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's smooth. That's smooth, yeah. Every time you see your friends, you go, oh man, I was up there today and it was awesome. <laughs> Let them rip. I've always been really interested in technique rather than going fast or steep. When I go to the mountain, I have a burning desire to try to make a better turn. Rock and roll, mostly rock. I still enjoy teaching. My friends, they just love getting a free shot, you know. Well, give me, give me something to work on. And so I get a big kick out of that. Skiing might catch on. Yeah. <laughs> the mountains are special. To be able to go in the middle of the winter in a snowstorm, to go to the top of a mountain, there's a feeling of adventure. No matter how many times you've been up there and skied around, it changes every day. And uh, to me, it never gets boring. For the modern outdoors person, skiing is choice for a day of adventure and winter recreation. Thanks to the invent of the snow groomer, there's no reason any mountain slope can't be as smooth as buttercream. Today's groomer is a marvel of human genius. Extra wide tracks allow the machine to glide effortlessly across steep mountainous terrain of snow and ice. The articulating plow is capable of pushing vast amounts of snow with ease and precision. Behind it drags a fierce blade of toothy steel, which churns and tills the snow's crust, leaving behind a smooth carpet of snow called corduroy as it moves along the slope. Yes, the groomer's become an essential tool for the discerning ski area. It's hard to imagine now, but there was a time when folks skied before the groomer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the golden age of winter recreation. From perfect corduroy to untamed side country, there's no wrong way to love the mountain. 
Some take their time, savoring every last turn. For others, it's all about speed. The perfect mountain. Wall-to-wall grooming with swooping turns and hard snow and blue skies. The mountain becomes a part of your being, a part of your fabric. For young athletes, it becomes their confidence. Oh, I love your arm guards. Those are looking good. All pink. You're going to show them how to ski like a woman. Anyone can turn where they want to if they're just skiing down, but if you have gates, you have to turn where you're supposed to. All that matters is executing. You don't really hear anything, everything stops. It's time. You're ready to kick out of the start and see what you're made of. You don't feel like you're going fast at all. The best feeling by far. To be able to be so good at something, so young. The benefits of ski racing go far beyond the podium. Grit, confidence, drive, self-worth, perseverance. These kids are going to excel and thrive in life. You just can't, can't put a value on that. My name is Zoe and I am 11 years old. I started skiing when I was four and it's a big part of my life. Mom, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Skiing allows children to be children and children to let out the childlike part in adults. Life is just sweet and you get up and you just enjoy the sweetness. I like to go to the Outback. Yeah, I like the Outback a lot. I just like anything that's like not groomed. Oh, I love tree trails. Can we go to the laundry one? Yeah. Bye, Mom. Bye, Hen. Get lunch. Get lunch. Growing up isn't so bad when it's on a mountain. This is a great place for a kid to be. Snow, snow, all I think about is snow. Where there's white. Fluffy powder, that's where I'm sure to go Sugary champagne that sparkles in the sun A nice crispy corduroy on a freshly groomed out run I high five my lifties at the bottom of the chair While I'm pulling all the icicles from my wet and messy hair The happiness is contagious, it must be in the air Cause when I'm out here skiing, I hardly have a care 
mountain. My friends are happy we're here, yes, on the mountain. Whether it's cloudy or it's clear, oh, on the mountain. We jump, we spin, we glide, oh, on the mountain. I feel so alive. about is snow it's the best medicine that i will ever know laughing faces with cold and rosy cheeks climbing to the top to send it from the peaks whether i'm with my friends or even if i'm alone a day on the mountain is the best i've ever known when the mountain is white and the mountain is steep is a lifestyle that I will surely keep Cause I'm on the mountain And my friends are happy we're here You're on the mountain Whether it's cloudy or it's clear You're on the mountain We jump, we spin, we dive oh, on the mountain I feel so alive It is a really neat experience being able to bring Zoe up here because I can let her go wherever she wants to be, however she wants to be, and I still feel safe. But yet, there's room to have adventures and meet different people. It's just sheer joy for her. I ski. Huh, why do I ski? I ski for speed, sometimes, but most of the time just for the thrill of going downhill. Skiing is uh, my number one sport. In fact, I've told my fishing friends it's cost me a lot of steelhead. You're the grenade and you're popping it off so you can go destroy it. You're destroying it. Um, I love it. I love every day of skiing. Corn, spring, crud, powder, groomer, doesn't matter. It returns a good one as long as you're on the snow. It's so much fun to be outdoors and shred the gnar. I can't imagine doing anything else in the winter. Getting the fresh air in your lungs, getting some exercise, being with friends, being with family. Sharing it with people is incredible. I love going singles on the chairlift so you get a ride with somebody new every time. I've met a couple people who ride those little ski bikes. They're the most interesting. Every variety of people on the planet. People that, that really care about enjoying life. Grounded, down to earth. Like-minded. Awesome. Positive. Super kind. There's not a lot of mean people in this game. Everyone's enjoying the moment. A smile on their face. Little ones, big ones, old ones. It just brings people together. Even if you've met for the first time, it's one big family. Skiing is uh, a way of life partly defines who I am as a person. It's like the little bit of heaven that I get on earth. It's like going to church only better. The blue sky, the trees. Being able to be at the stand at the top of the mountain, take a deep breath, realize my place in life, and then descend that mountain with speed is, I don't know, I guess it just all feels good. There's not really any restrictions. Uh, other than when the lifts close, you gotta go home and have a cold one. But what does it mean to me? Having a good time? It's a good time. It came in the night. Winter's final offer. Fire the hole, shoot 14. Well, clear. So begins the race for first tracks. for the prize of public office and most folks run for exercise to avoid their stomach softness to attract prospective husbands or hey wife when i 
run, I run for my life. But not to win some degraded prize. When you run, run for your life. I've seldom had to run to. Pains in your gut cut like a knife When you run, run for your life Sedentary men, they don't have to run for nothing And I would rather run to you than run away from something Followed closely by a fiddle and a fight When you run, run for your life Nothing lasts forever. Snow melts, days lengthen, the pines wake up and shake it off in the warm breeze, delivering the bittersweet scent of spring. And as a new season says hello, we reluctantly say goodbye to winter. We gather together to spin tall tales of perfect days and loud nights, smooth groomers and rough mornings, big air, painful crashes, friendships new and old. And at the center of it all, our sacred winter gathering place, the hometown hill. We bid the mountain farewell, but know we'll soon return to get lifted once again.
Uh, I'm here at uh, Mission Ridge today and being proud of your local hill means a lot to me. And while we have our own little communities, we're all part of one big community. We're all doing the same thing. We, we love our skiing and we love playing in the mountains and uh, it means a lot to me. My man. Burning through. Oh, 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 Super rad. Uh, at one point my face got so cold I almost threw up. Shooting up at Mission Ridge. Having a great time getting some scenic vistas right now. Yeah, right over there. Time. They shred, man. They are crazy good. And they're up 10. You said here! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> That's South Pacific. Yeah. <laughs> Bali. Yeah. This breaks like every painting roll right here, right? <laughs> you see, we had him on the roof last time. Hey, <laughs>